Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Matic System 1.3 GHz video transmission system. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over the features of the receiving and transmission units, measure the output strength of the VTX, and then head outdoors and test it out. The Matic System 1.3 GHz VTX and RX system is available in two versions. The international version, which is the one I have, supports 9 channels, and the US version is limited to 2. In addition, the VTX and RX units are not bundled together, so you need to buy each of them separately, and both come with a 1.3 GHz antenna, which is best tuned to match the 1240 frequency, which by the way is not supported by the US version. In terms of packaging, the receiver came well protected inside the small plastic box, and the VTX comes with two pieces of clear heat shrinks. As I just mentioned, both units are bundled with a 1.3 GHz antenna, which is using an SMA antenna connector, and if you need more antennas, you can buy them for $10 a pair. In terms of specs, the output strength of the VTX is 28 dBm, which is equivalent to 630 mV. It features an onboard microphone, and its input voltage is between 6 to 36 volts, so you can power it up directly with between 2 to 8 cells LiPo batteries. Next to the VCC and ground pads, which you are going to use in order to power up the VTX, you can find the video in pad, ground pad, and plus 5V pads, which are going to enable you to power up an FEV camera, audio in pad, which is going to override the built-in microphone, and TX and RX pads, which are currently not in use, and might on a later stage enable you to update the firmware of the VTX, and maybe control it using your flight controller, in a similar way like IRC Trump, and TBS Smart Audio Protocols. In addition, this VTX weighs 8.7 grams, so it's relatively light, and its dimensions are 21.5 by 36 by 6.4 millimeters. As for the video receiver, it is designed to fit any standard FedTrack compatible model bay, and in case your model came with a 10th straight pin header, you should simply remove it, as otherwise it's not going to fit inside the FedTrack model bay. Unfortunately, it's not compatible with the original cover that comes with the FedShock HDO and HDO2, but if you'd like, you can use the cover of the Immersion MC Rapid Fire. In addition, just like the VTX, on the receiver you can find RX and TX pads, which as far as I know currently are not in use, and it features a built-in voltage regulator, so using these pads, you can power it up with a DC input between 6 to 30 volts. The weight of the receiver is 13.6 grams, and together with the bundled antenna, it weighs 20.5 grams. Now in case you wonder what is the big advantage of using a 1.3 GHz video transmission system, here you can see the approximate range under ideal conditions, and as you can see this number is crazy, 51.67 km, again under ideal conditions, but for example if I'm going to change the frequency to 5800, you can see that the range is 11.58, and that's because there is a linear correlation between the maximum distance and the frequency. So if I'm going to change the frequency, for example, to 4000, you can see that the range is 16.79 kilometers. And if I'm going to change the frequency to 2000 instead, this range is going to be doubled. Here is another example. Again, when the frequency is set to 5800, the maximum range is 11.58 kilometers. And if I'm going to double the output strength, it's not going to be doubled, it's going to be multiplied by the square root of 2. In case you want to run some experiments, I'm going to leave a link to this calculator, which can be quite handy. Now I'm going to measure the output strength of the VTX using the Immersion LC RF meter. The measured output strength is about 740 mV. After a minute, the temperature of the VTX at its hottest point is about 41 degrees Celsius, and the output strength is still about 740 mV. After 2 minutes, the temperature is getting closer to 50 degrees Celsius, and the output strength is still about 740 mV. After 3 minutes, the temperature is about 55 degrees Celsius, and the output strength is still about 740 mV. And finally, after 4 minutes, the temperature is about 58 degrees Celsius, and the output strength is about 735 mV. So from this short test, we can learn that this VTX doesn't get as nearly as hot as equivalent 5.8 GHz VTXs, which makes its output strength pretty consistent, even without cooling down. Switching between the 4 or 8 available channels on the receiver and transmitter units is pretty simple, and is done using these buttons. 
Next to each channel, you can find an LED, and after long pressing the channel selection button for about 2 seconds, the LED is going to flash, and then you can switch between the channels by short pressing the channel selection button. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test out the system, but unfortunately I can already tell you that I didn't get too far because I experienced terrible interference which was caused by the Crossfire 900 MHz radio transmission system, and I did use a notch filter on the radio receiver which seemed to help, but still the range was very limited, and on top of that it seems that the 1.3 GHz video transmission system interferes with the GPS signal as well. In order to handle this issue, I'm going to get a better notch filter and also build a 1.3 GHz to 5.8 GHz mini repeater station, which would dramatically reduce the interference of the crossfire transmission model after being placed about 25 meters away from it. So as you probably understand, in case you're using crossfire or any other 900 MHz radio transmission system, this is not going to be a plug and play setup, and if you want to keep things more simple, it's probably going to be a better option to go with a 2.4 GHz video transmission system. Having said that, I am going to build this repeater and keep you updated regarding the results. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.